since the time of illegal annexation of Crimea by Russia, its mass media outlets have been continually imposing on its own population and the world community the viewpoint of alleged restoration of historical justice and return of Russian ancestral lands to Moscow. But as history shows, the thesis about Russian primordialness is not a basic one. Because since the 12th century BC, more than 10 nations and peoples have inhabited the Crimean Peninsula. So who does Crimea really belong to? Can we today, guided by the principle of historical law, ignore the principles of international law? The history of Crimea is colorful and unexpected, surrounded by numerous myths and legends. It is this factor that enables Russians to make various claims to this ancient land. For thousands of years, Crimea was at the crossroads of civilizational fractures. And because of this, obviously her story is still remarkable, but extremely fascinating, with the kaleidoscope of epochs, cultures, such a historical thriller. If we talk about a variety of insinuations, we're talking about various myths, labels. This describes official Russian historiography, in particular, that Crimea is allegedly sacred land for Russians. Just like famous places in Palestine are for Muslims and Jews. According to Ukrainian historians, if we proceed from the principles of primacy and historical law, then Crimea should be considered a Tatar. Because over the course of 300 years, in the 15th to 18th centuries, a Tatar monarchical state called the Crimean Hanat existed here. The emergence in the middle of the 15th century of the Tatar state, the Crimean Hanat, allegedly historically anchored Crimea for a long period of time as Tatar land. There were not just Crimean Tatars there, but Ukrainians too, because there were settlements where Ukrainian Cossacks lived in northern Crimea, Armenians lived there, as did Karaims and Jews, and Genoese people lived in the south of Crimea. Before the formation of the independent Crimean state, a number of different nations passed through the peninsula, the first ones on the peninsula were the Tavrus, who later gave Crimea the ancient name of Tavrida or Tavria. Different peoples, different ethnic groups lived in Crimea in different historical eras. Crimea is such a special region, which borders the steppe, has mountains, access to the sea, so it was a very attractive place to live for many people. Scythians, Sarmatians lived in Crimea too. There are references to the fact that the Sumerians were inhabitants of Crimea. In the second half of the first millennium BC, Crimea became a home for the Romans, for the Byzantines. Turks lived in Crimea. There were also Goths, Huns. There were Rus people, a Slavic ethnos. From the 10th century, the Kiev princes began to be interested in the Black Sea and Crimea. It was in Kursanesis that Prince Volodymyr Svetoslavovich was baptized. After that, he returned to Kiev and in 988 baptized it. Russian historiography clings to this very historical fact. Kersonesis is the place where our Christianity originated, but it does not conform with the historical past. If we recall those assertions that Prince Volodymyr of Kiev was supposedly baptized into the Orthodox Rite during a military expedition. And then, in the 10th century, he brought Christianity to Rus. But in relation to Muscovy at this time, this legendary Russian people simply did not de facto exist.
Finno-Ugric tribes were the indigenous population back then that lived on the territory of both contemporary Moscow region and the central part of modern Russia. Besides, some of them were at the level of the late Stone Age. In the 13th century, just like the whole of southeastern Europe, Crimea was subjected to invasion by the Mongol Tatars. The internal strife in the Horde and the support of the Polish-Lithuanian state contributed to the formation of an independent Crimean Hanat in 1449. At different times, relations between the Crimean Tatars and Zaporizhian Cossacks formed in different ways. Both the Cossacks and the Crimean Tatars used each other to solve their domestic issues. If we take the events associated with the 1620s, then the Cossacks took an active part even in the struggle of Crimean Hans for the throne. When the uprising by Bohdan Khmelnytsky of 1648 began, which then became a national revolution, Khmelnytsky appealed to the Crimean Han for help not just as a nobleman setting up an alliance. This was the first step towards protection of the Crimean Han. The assistance provided by Islam Giray to Bohdan Khmelnytsky was not only in the form of horse cavalry, which allowed him to win, but it also was the international recognition of Khmelnytsky himself. The long-running aggression of the Russian Empire against the Crimean Hanad begins in the first half of the 18th century. Its purpose was to weaken the military power of the Crimean Tatars and to provide a path to the Black Sea. For 48 years, the Russian Empire methodically destroyed life on the peninsula. The Russian invasion of 1735 to 1739 was a national catastrophe for the Crimean Hanad, during which large cities were turned into ruins, the economy was badly damaged and many local people were decimated. It was imperial expansion, openly expressive expansion. It ended in a humanitarian catastrophe. After Russia won these Russo-Turkish wars and after that in 1783, when it became the ruler of Crimea, almost 60% much of the population left their homes in Crimea. According to the 1897 census of the population, the majority on the peninsula were Tatars. There were 36% of them, just 30% were Russians, and Ukrainians made up 12% of the population. The rest were Germans, Greeks, Jews. With the collapse of the Russian Empire in 1917, the Crimean People's Republic was proclaimed on the peninsula, the first democratic country in the Muslim world. But in January 1918, the Russian Bolsheviks seized the peninsula and began the Red Terror there. This terror was very cruel. Among them, the leader of the Crimean Tatars, Noman Chilebidjihan, was killed. During the terror, more than a thousand prominent revolutionary figures of Crimea, who stood in pro-Ukrainian positions and supported the Central Rada, who opposed the Bolsheviks, the Crimean Tatars, who supported the creation of an autonomy, were purged. They were simply shot. This terror caused great horror back then in Crimea and great hatred on the part of Crimea's residents to the Bolshevik authorities. In April 1918, troops of the Ukrainian People's Republic, under the command of Petro Bolbochan, freed Crimea from the Bolsheviks. But at the demand of Germany, they had to leave the territory of the peninsula. In 1921, after the liberation of Crimea from the White Guards, the Bolsheviks finally established their power here. Crimea was under the rule of the Russian Empire for a total of 134 years. For example, Byzantium controlled Crimea for 650 years. In comparison with such a segment, of course, we cannot talk about the presence of Russians since time immemorial. In the autumn of 1921, the peninsula became part of the Russian Soviet Republic with autonomous rights. After German troops were expelled from Crimean territory in 1944, the Soviet authorities deported over 190,000 Crimean Tatars from their historical homeland to remote regions of the Soviet Union. The official reason for the forced resettlement was the accusation made against the entire Crimean Tatar people 
of mass collaboration with Nazi Germany. That which happened in Crimea in 1944 was a great tragedy. Historians and lawyers recognize this act of genocide against the Crimean Tatar people. The conditions have been created for the Russians to be able to say for the first time that Crimea has become Russian. It is because the eviction of the entire Crimean Tatar nation led to the fact that the indigenous people who lived there for centuries disappeared from the ethnic map of Crimea. They started to forget about it and do everything so that they would never come back again. And other people who came from non chernozom Russia started to be brought to this place. Other displayed persons from other regions of the Great Soviet Empire were also resettled in Crimea. After being part of Russia for about 30 years, it was decided at the highest level of the USSR to transfer Crimea to Ukraine. As stated in the decree of the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet of the USSR of February 19, 1954, the transfer of the Crimean Oblast and Sevastopol to the Ukrainian SSR was caused by acute economic need, proximity to the Ukrainian SSR, and the convenience of providing the region with water, electricity, food items from the mainland part of the Ukrainian SSR, the need to step up post-war rebuilding, etc. In the history of the transfer of the Crimean Peninsula by the Russian Federation, there exists a collection of jokes, various tales, historical and political myths, so much so that for the uninitiated person it is very difficult to understand what really happened. As to Mikita Khrushchev, his big gesture about his Ukrainian roots, his gift to the 300th anniversary of the Periaslav Council, in general, his drunken act during a feast that he decided, according to Putin's definition, to hand over Crimea like a bag of potatoes, it was in fact already a heavy burden on the Russian Federation. All this was legalized. The only thing is that all these documents have now been made secret. And I think that opening them will reveal this true story to us. Shortly after the proclamation of Ukraine's independence in autumn 1991, the Verkhovna Rada of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea proclaimed the region to be part of Ukraine. On the first day of December, the people in the Crimean Autonomous Republic took part in the all-Ukrainian referendum. The act on Ukraine's independence was confirmed by more than 54% of the Crimean population, and in Sevastopol the figure was more than 57%. But by leaving the Black Sea fleet in Crimea, Russia tried all the time to sow separatist sentiments among the local population. They made a full recovery during Euromaidan in Kyiv at the end of 2013, beginning of 2014. And on November 20th, Russia started its illegal military occupation of Crimea. Хотя подготовка к этой агрессии началась еще далеко. Although preparations for this aggression began long before 2014, the most active preparations began from 2010, and plans to drag Ukraine into the so-called New Empire of Russia, or Integrated Association, which it created under its own ages, there were manifested, formed and continually perfected since the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. To somehow justify the illegal military occupation of Crimea, a so-called referendum on separation from Ukraine was held on the peninsula in March 2014. And two days later, on the basis of this pseudo-referendum, where 70% of the population allegedly supported the invaders, Crimea was annexed by Russia. Approximately 18-20% to was the true will of the pro-Russian electorate in Crimea. The remainder, the Ukrainian and Crimean Tatar population, was against violent accession, against an occupation that had taken place in violation of all the rules and norms of international law. It is clear that neither the so-called referendum nor the annexation of Crimea by Russia were recognized in the world. In addition, the international community introduced an economic blockade of occupied Crimea and applied economic sanctions against Russia. 
Крим частиною України. If you have to give a direct answer to the question, is Crimea part of Ukraine? I think that for this, it's not even necessary to search for historical documents, since there are a number of state interstate acts certified at the highest international level and agreed upon. Рівні і узгоджених. Today, there is no international document that would deny that Crimea belongs to Ukraine. The inalienability of existing borders is enshrined in United Nations documents. The Russian Federation specifically confirmed the inviolability of the Russian-Ukrainian state border in the Budapest Memorandum of 1994 on the handover of nuclear weapons by Ukraine. Finally, the principle of recognizing the inviolability of existing borders and respect for territorial integrity was confirmed at the Treaty on Friendship, Cooperation and Partnership between the Russian Federation and Ukraine, signed in 1997, which was in force at the time of Crimea's annexation. Due to Russia's aggressive policy in 2019, Ukraine had to denounce this document and continue efforts at international level for the deoccupation of Crimea.